Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this being our last session of the 19th Annual Education and Career Expo on Friday, October 30th. The session <clears throat> that we have right now at one o'clock is Personal Technology. Uh, we want to thank each and every one of you for being with us um, the entirety of this week. If you have, I've, I've started to recognize a lot of names that, that are joining us on a daily basis. So thank you all. And thank you all for all the new individuals that are with us. <clears throat> we'd, uh, we'd like to thank our partners for uh, the Education and Career Expo. Um, one of our, our big partners is the Workforce Solutions Cameron. We definitely appreciate them and their continued support along with RGV Lead. Uh, I, my name is Luis Rodriguez and I am the Executive Director of RGV Lead and we are honored to be able to provide this um, great experience for you all juniors and seniors, uh, as you prepare um, not only for um, your future education along with some opportunities to learn a little bit from business professionals about, you know, uh, the things that we've been talking about today in regards to soft skills and employability skills. We'd like to thank Texas Gas Service and uh, for being a gold sponsor and Harlinger Manufacturers Association for being a bronze sponsor. So <clears throat> using technology while at work. Um, these are some of the, the takeaways that we have gotten from, you know, in, in regards when we talk to individuals. Don't use emojis in work or professional emails. Um, that's a big no-no. Uh, you know, I, I know we like to use emojis in this, um, but if you're sending an email, it's a professional email, it's a work email. Uh, even if you're, you know, a high school senior right now, try and stay away from the, the emojis. Uh, it just makes you look that much more professional. Um, and then you want to keep email separate from professional and, and and uh, in business. So just make sure you have that separation. Use your technology responsible. Uh, and we've talked about that throughout today uh, in the different sessions if you've been sitting with us. So we appreciate that. And then just make sure you navigate the internet safely. Uh, there's a lot of things out there. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, may seem interesting, may seem, you know, something you want to look at, but just, just be safe when you're out in the, on the internet. So we're going to continue. <clears throat> Next we have Paola Escalante, the vice president. Uh, from Frost Bank. She has a message for us. Let me turn off my camera. I think I turn off my camera. Hello, everyone. My name is Paola Escalante Castillo, and I am a relationship manager officing out of the Westville Financial Center. I'd like to go ahead and get started by telling you a little bit about the bank and my role. Ross Bank has been in business for over 150 years. We provide banking, insurance, and investment products to our customers throughout eight markets in the state of Texas. This includes San Antonio, which is also our headquarters, Austin, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Permian Basin, Corpus Christi, and the Rio Grande Valley. At Frost, we take pride in building long-term relationships with our customers, and it is further explained in our mission statement. We will grow and prosper long-term relationships based on top quality service, high ethical standards, and safe, sound assets. So what is a relationship manager? A relationship manager is essentially a commercial lender for the bank. You are responsible for managing a loan portfolio that includes clients within different industries. I have been in banking for about 16 years now, and I will soon be celebrating my 10 year anniversary with Frost Bank. When I started in banking, I started as a part time teller, primarily because I was still going to school and I wanted a job that would allow flexibility and so that I could attend school in the evenings. Um, I truly enjoyed my role as a teller and was soon given the opportunity to move into other roles that included personal banker, lending assistant, and I eventually transitioned into the credit department as a credit analyst. I came to Frost in March of 2011 and I entered into the Associate Relationship Manager Program which is ultimately a credit analyst. Um, and I was in that program for about two to three years before transitioning into the lending role. 
I attended the University of Texas Pan American and completed with a Bachelor's of Business Administration in Accounting during 2008. I will say that typically banks will look for individuals that have either an accounting or finance background for the positions of either credit analysts or even lenders. Um, so that tells you a little bit about my history in banking. And um, let's go ahead and jump into today's topic, which is using personal technology while at work. So the first question is, share how you communicate employee policies about using personal technology at work. So first of all, Frost Bank, does have written policies in place regarding the use of personal technology. And I think that at this point in time, many companies will do the same. Um, I think with COVID and everything that is going on and, and the, us being in a more virtual world, um, it's almost impossible to be able to perform many roles without the use of technology. And so it leads me into my next question. What are some of the pros for allowing employees to use personal technology? I will say, speaking from my specific role, I would not be able to accomplish my role without the use of technology. Um, I am currently working from home. And in order to uh, be able to perform my daily tasks, I do use a work laptop as well as a work uh, mobile. And I think that it facilitates my job so much more. Um, I am able to efficiently um, service numerous clients at the, at the same time through the use of this personal technology. Um, however, you know, I think we just have to be very mindful and very careful when using personal technology for work. And again, I'm speaking more to the financial institution. Um, we deal with so much confidential information on a daily basis. And as such, you know, we do have ongoing trainings about, you know, how you should access customer data where you should access customer data and you know especially when you're traveling back and forth between the office and maybe a client's office you know how to properly store your laptop your mobile i mean all these things are very important and so i will tell you that one of the things that frost looks at um, or expects from our employees is you know you have to treat every situation with the utmost responsibility. It doesn't matter if a customer just, you know, hey, I'm sending you some information. I mean, you need to treat it very, be very respectful of the confidentiality and making sure that you don't leave anything out on your desk, um, that anything's open in your screen, anything like that. Um, as far as the advice I can give you on preparing yourself, uh, for employability skills is always carry yourself in a very professional manner. Um, one of the things that I like to share with my team members is just that, you know, you're always representing the company that you work for, whether you're on the clock or not. Um, you need to make sure that you can communicate properly, um, that you can write efficiently, and, you know, all those things are very important, especially now because, you know, this whole virtual world that we're in, you want to make sure that you can have a successful call with a client or even with a team member, you know, via a virtual setting. And, you know, bear in mind that even though you're not in front of the person, you know, it's almost as if you were. So, um, I would advise you to, you know, look at some etiquette courses also. Um, one of the neat things about Frost is, you know, when I joined the company back in 2011, um, and even to this day, they offer what is known as a financial services university that not only provides the fundamentals 
that you need us to perform the credit role, but they also have etiquette courses, you know, anything from teaching you how to properly answer a phone to um, how to put together a memo, how to send an email, how you should sign an email and open an email. I mean, all those things are very important. And I would say that, you know, especially into the transition of, you know, going from in-person to virtual, you always have to keep that in mind. Sometimes it may seem that you're sitting through a class and you're asking yourself, am I really ever going to use this? You never know. Um, I can tell you that I, I have, you know, and it's very important that you give some thought as to what it is that you want to do. When I started in banking, I wasn't 100% sure that this was the path I wanted to take. But um, as I, you know, was exposed more to it and as I was doing, you know, my accounting courses, I quickly realized that, you know, this is what I wanted to do. And so I always have goals in mind and talk to people um, that, you know, network. I think the other big one is networking. Um, getting there, meeting people, you never know. I mean, I have made so many connections in all these years that I've been in banking, and it's it helps you. It helps you in your role, and you know whatever role that it, it is you decide to take. I think it's very important to network. Um, as far as any other advice I could give you that you can take to help you become successful in life is, you know, um, experience. Get some experience. You know, if maybe you're fully loaded with classes and you can't necessarily hold a job, but you can do an internship or anything like that, get exposed. Um, that's what employers like to see. We like to see that you know, you can multitask and that you can carry a full workload of, you know, classes and still get yourself out, get involved in the community, get back to your community. Um, that's also another thing that employers look at a lot is just seeing how involved you are with the community and giving back your time. And um, other than that, I think that's all I have. Really, I'm thrilled that I was part of this um, expo. And I hope that you're able to take the information that I shared with you and apply it to your education and career opportunities. Thank you. We definitely want to thank Ms. Escalante for the information that she has shared with us today. Uh, great information. We definitely appreciate it. Uh, next, if you give me just a moment, I'm actually going to make Mrs. Mendes a presenter. We can't hear you. Okay, can you can you hear me now? Now we can hear you. Thank you. Okay, great. I'm so sorry. All right, I was saying that. Good afternoon, everyone. It is such a pleasure to be here with you guys. I know that I am uh, the one keeping you from finishing your conference or your expo, so I'm going to try to make it very quick and to the point. Um, uh, I'm Stephanie Mendes. I am the manager for the Center for Innovation and Commercialization here at UTRGB. And I'm going to be talking to you guys about personal technology while at work. And I'm also going to be giving you some um, advice that I wish somebody would have given me when I was your age, okay, when I was in your shoes. So I know it's not easy. Um, okay, so can you see my screen all right? Yes, we can see Yes, it. we can. Okay. Yes. Okay, this is not working. How do I click next? Um, try the enter button. Try the arrow to the right. Um, use your okay. mouse. To go. There you go. We got it to work. All right. So first of all, um, I just want to talk a little bit about what is personal technology. You may be saying, I don't know what uh, she's talking about. Personal technology, guys, is basically everything you we have access to, like our phones, uh, our computers, our, our tablets. And you guys were born in an age where uh, the internet, 
phones, tablets, I mean, all of that is already available. You don't know a world without technology. So telling you not to use personal technology is, is, is kind of a, goes against your nature, pretty much. And now in a world where it's, this is the new normal about working from home, doing school from home, uh, it's very, very difficult not to use personal technology. So I want to make two uh, distinctions. One, personal technology is the technology that you own yourself, like your personal cell phone, your personal uh, tablet, your personal computer. And the other one is that kind of technology, but issued to you from the employer. Okay. It is done. It is used for the same purpose. You can use, I mean, you can use your phone, your tablet, your computer for, for work and for uh, school, for your personal use. And you can also use your employers, but you have to be very careful because, you know, for example, when, when somebody hires you, um, to come in, like let's say, you know, we want to hire student interns to work here with us. Of course, we know that they're going to have a phone, okay? It's unrealistic for us to think that you guys are not going to have a phone or a computer or are not going to, you know, have apps on your phone, of course. What I'm saying is when you guys are working somewhere in a professional setting, you need to be very, very careful uh, because you need to be doing your work. Okay. Um, of course, if you have a call, if you have, you know, to text someone, uh, if it's an emergency, absolutely. Um, if, if the company is going to be issuing you guys the phone or a computer, that's something very, very different. Okay. So, uh, your phone is your personal property, but you, if a phone is issued to you, if a computer or a tablet is issued to you from the employer, that, you know, phone, tablet, computer belongs to the employer. So everything that you do using that uh, technology, it, it belongs to the employer. And it is, you know, they're all in their legal right to record everything that you use or that you do while using that technology. Or let's say that, you know, um, now people nowadays use Zoom right? Um, some of you guys may be using Zoom or the Google Hangout or the Google Classroom for, for your classes. Well, that's also being used in the workplace. And, you know, I know that it was shared earlier to be very careful with what you share on email. Absolutely. But you also have to be very careful with what you share on those um, instant message messages. You know how it's kind of like DM, right? Like if you were to, like let's say you have Instagram or you know, Facebook, you know, you DM people, right? Well, the the equivalent of DMing in the workplace would be using those little chat rooms um, for Zoom or for Teams or for any of those softwares. And, you know, you feel like you're not emailing people and you're not. And then, you know, you could get to the habit of uh, messaging people like if you're texting, you know, you can start sharing emojis and then, you know, share very, very personal information, or you can be talking about your personal life. And all of that is recorded, guys. All of that is is stored in the server. And if the company ever wants to look at that, they have all the right to do so. So you have to be very, very careful with what you share. Um, and then also, I'm going to share it with you guys a little bit of etiquette at work um, in case you uh, want to befriend your coworkers or your boss or people that, you know, you work in a professional manner with. Or let's say that uh, let's say that you have an internship and you're going to be in charge of, you know, social media, because nowadays, you know, if you if your business does not exist online, you don't exist at all. If somebody cannot find your business by searching it on Google, you're basically invisible to the world, right? And so a lot of businesses are offering internships for high school students, college students, and one of the like one of the um, main roles that sometimes they they give is to be in charge of social media. We have to be very very careful with this. And uh, first of all, you have to really understand uh, the company culture, you know, like what do they stand for? What can you share and what can you not share? Especially if you're going to be managing their social media, let's say you get confused and you log into, you know, Instagram or Twitter and then you start tweeting these things. And instead of uh, tweeting these things or liking these things from your personal account, 
you do it from your company account. So that's very, very, very careful uh, for you to take in mind. And then, you know, when you, get, when you guys are going to be using social media at work, let's say they give you access to, you know, YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or any of those things, you need to make sure that you uh, are using it for the work purposes because it's very, very easy. Um, let's say you're not, you don't have a lot of work to do and, you know, you could feel, well, nobody's watching me or I don't really have a lot of uh, assignments. Let me watch a, a YouTube video. Or let me watch Netflix, you know, uh, and that's very, very important for you to take in mind, guys, um, because you don't want your boss to to get over, you know, uh, get after you for, for doing that. And it does not look professional. Uh, you have to make sure that you're, you know, if you're going to be befriending people from your workplace, um, you have to be very positive. Stay positive with what you share and stay neutral, uh, especially you know, and, and very um, topics that are very, uh, what is the word, I guess, uh, people have very different views on, you know, you don't want to uh, be the cause of posting things on, on social media and then people to befriend you because of that. And then if you're going to be sharing information on the company social media or on your own personal social media, but you have friends that you work with, you need to make sure that whatever you post is true. You don't want to, you know, post fake news and people to call you out on that. Okay, and now we're going to share what you really don't want to do uh, when you guys are going to be handling social media uh, for your workplace or you guys have uh, friends, your boss is your friend or your coworkers or your former boss. You don't ever want to post you know you don't want to get political on things that that's people unfriend each other because of that okay they they just uh are getting to really bad arguments and definitely you don't want to do that you also don't want to overshare uh personal things you know i mean you've ever heard about the word tmi right i mean if it's tmi do not share it on social media. Do not, you know, share it with your boss or your coworkers. That's for you and your personal circle to, you know, to talk about. Um, definitely do not uh, post any bullying things or, you know, discriminate anyone. That is so wrong, you guys. You can get fired, okay? People have gotten fired for sharing those things on their personal social media, even though they were not using the worker, uh, the work uh, social media. I mean, that comes back to you. And something that you post on the internet, you guys, somebody takes a screenshot of that, and that thing is not going to go anywhere. Um, also, another thing is please do not complain about your work on any social media outlet. Uh, on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok. Do not compare, complain about your work, your boss, your coworkers, or if you guys are going to be messaging, you know, on the Zoom or on, the, on those chats, on those platforms, somebody can take a screenshot of that, send it to your boss, and it also gets recorded. I mean, it's, it, those things don't erase. So make sure that you are very mindful of that because um, nowadays in this virtual world, I mean, it's, it's a reality. We're not, this is not going to go away. Um, the, you know, the technology anytime soon. Um, another thing that I really, really want to talk to you guys about is if somebody was to ask me, what is something that is the number one in, uh, fact, uh, for uh, the number one thing that I look for if I was to hire someone, you know, to be an intern or a part-time student uh, worker here? Honestly, I would say, uh, soft skills. It does not matter if you are the brightest person, you have the 4.0 GPA, you are in, you know, in all of these student organizations and you're president and you have all of this amazing resume. I would, you know, if I had to rate it, I would put soft skills as my number one skill that I would look for when hiring someone. And if, I, you know, because if you think about it, when you go out in the workplace, you guys, uh, you get to spend more time with the people that you work with than with your own family. You know, just let that sink in for a moment. Uh, you, let's say you're working full time, you know, from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's about nine hours, right? Eight to nine hours. 
uh, you don't really get to spend all that time with your pets or with your friends or with your parents, and you get to spend all that time with your coworkers, right, and with your boss. And so if I'm going to be spending all that time with the people at my job, I need to make sure that I enjoy being around them. And if, and all these soft skills, you guys, are so incredibly important. I mean, I've talked to so many employers, and they say the same thing, okay? And I know maybe you've heard about these things, and you don't know them by soft skills, but that's what they are. Uh, you need to make sure that you communicate clearly. I cannot stress this enough when... I used to work with, with students uh, in my former job, uh, and I cannot stress this enough, you guys. You have to be, you have to have clear communication, okay? Sound confident, whatever is it, whoever is it that you're gonna, you guys are gonna be talking to, you need to sound confident, you need to listen, not just hear the people, you know, because you can hear what people are telling you, but that doesn't mean that you're listening to them, okay? Just pause for a second, don't interrupt the people. Just just listen to them. Just let, let it sink in. Process what they're saying. And then before you say something, you know, just, just process it, okay? Uh, another thing is uh, a lot of people are very impatient uh, and don't, you know, they get impatient, they get frustrated quickly, and you need to be, if you're going to be working uh, with customers or, or with people in the workplace, you need to have self-control, you guys. Uh, because the people that you work with are not your family. And you're not going to treat them like your family. You're going to treat them like your colleagues. And that's very, very important. Um, another thing is that you have to be, uh, you have to have a positive attitude. Uh, I don't want to hire someone that is going to come into the workplace and just be negative all the time. You know, just, just you know, kind of like a negative Nancy. You know, you've ever, you know, um, been friends with people that are like that, that you say anything and they find the little bad thing and everything, no. We want positive people. You, you know, you, you want to be somebody that's going to be uh, cheering you on and all of that. Also, assertiveness, that basically means be confident. If you have an idea and you just, you're just shy of, of sharing it, uh, you're scared of maybe a, a dumb idea or a bad idea, that doesn't matter. Just be confident. You know, have believe in yourself and just, you know, just share it. The, what's the worst thing that people can say? The worst thing that I could say is no. You know, just, just sound confident. Um, another thing, you guys, this is so important. I cannot stress this enough. Uh, you know, we're not made out of gold, and that means that not everybody's going to like us, okay? Um, you know, but you have to get you have to get along with the people that you work with. And so if you have a disagreement with a coworker or, or there's something that somebody did that you didn't like, you know, make sure that you, you share it with your supervisor or, or the people that you work with and you guys get to talk about it. You know, don't, uh, don't be spreading uh, rumors or, you know, uh, getting into a fight with the people that you work with. Remember, these people are not your friends. These people are your colleagues. Um, and empathy just basically means, you know, um, just make sure that you, you know, it's kind of like when somebody's sharing some something sad, you know, just make sure that you you sound like you're interested in what they're in what they're sharing, and you know, you just you just listen to them. Another thing is, uh, you know, just make sure that you show initiative. Okay, sometimes. Uh, you know, you, you, you get um, duties from your supervisor and maybe they didn't give you enough and you have free time and, you know, just take initiative. Just be like, okay, I finished my work. What can I do for you? Is there anything you would like? Just take initiative, take responsibility. Of, if you see something um, that maybe needs to get done and they have not assigned that to you, just, you know, take initiative and be like, hey, do you mind if I help you with this? That just shows that you you want to be there. You know, you want to be part of the team. Um, and then the last one, you guys, is just have some sense of humor, okay? It's nice to work with people that, that laugh with you or that make you feel good. You know, we want to we be able to work with people that we like. That's really, really, really important. Um, and then one of the last things that I want to share with you guys is, super important and that is body language 
And if you've never heard of body language, basically means uh, sharing information without using words. Instead of using words, you use it, you know, you, you, your body, how, however your body, however you're, you're um, um, you know, uh, using your body, it's communicating things to people on a daily basis, even if you don't notice. Like if you, you know, just cross your arms, that's basically telling people you're not interested in what they have to say. Or if you're in an interview and you're over here looking at the ceiling, you're you're you know you sound like you you don't care what what they're asking you or what they're telling you, or you're making it up. Okay, that's very 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 important. Or you know when you forget to smile, you're just you just look upset all the time, and that may mean that you are not upset. That just but that's what it's communicating to people. Uh, you just be very mindful of what how your body is you know make sure whenever you go to an interview you maintain eye contact that's very very important because all the people all most of the students that i've met you know they really have a hard time with this of looking people in the eye having a very firm handshake uh just communicating clearly sounding confident just just sound confident sometimes you know i i say this all the time Sometimes just fake it till you make it. I mean, seriously, uh, you don't have to feel at the moment that you're the most confident person in the world or that you're the best for the job. But if you sound like you know what you're talking about and you look like you know what you're talking about, people will perceive you that way, you guys. I mean, perception is reality. The way that you portray yourself, the way that you sound, the way that you dress, the way that you interact with others, that's how people are going to see you. And remember, when you meet people for the very first time in the workplace, um, you only have one chance at a first impression. I mean, the first impression is the most important, guys, and you don't get a do-over, okay? Um, those are, were all basically the things that I wanted to share with you. Um, just to finish up, just quick advice on things that I wish somebody would have told me when I was your age, uh, 17, 18 years old, trying to decide what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, which is pretty unrealistic. Like seriously, who knows what they want to do for the rest of their lives at 17 or 18? I, I, I find that, you know, it blows my mind. Um, I didn't. So what I wish somebody would have told me was definitely uh, find a mentor, find someone that you advise, that you uh, admire. It could be a teacher. It could be somebody that's doing the job that you want to do later on reach out to them, formally reach out to them. And what I mean by formally, I mean email them, call them, but it has to be formally. Uh, and then just tell them, you know, you're someone that I truly admire or you're somebody that's doing a job that I would love to do in the future. Would you please consider being my mentor? And, you know, and just set designated times and days when you, whenever you guys are going to meet, whether it's virtually or on the phone, in person or so, make sure they have the time. But find someone out there, you guys, that's not your family that is going to be able to give you some guidance. And, I, and the reason why I tell you that is because, I mean, my family, they never went to school. You know, they, they didn't they didn't know all the, the ins and outs of college and doing internships and shadowing and, I mean, they didn't. So I had to find a mentor that had all that knowledge and somebody that is not my family member. Because sometimes when you ask advice from your family members uh, and they may be giving you the really, really good advice, uh, you don't listen for some reason. But if somebody that is not from your family gives you the same advice that your parents or your siblings give you, I don't know why, for some reason, you think it's, a, it's the greatest idea you've ever heard. But uh, that is really, really important, you guys. Uh, find a mentor. Another thing is, honestly, just find either a job shadowing or a student internship. Because, you know, I cannot stress this enough. You know, a major, whenever you guys go to college, what you're studying is what you guys are going to be doing for the rest of your lives, okay? Unless you get super rich and you don't have to work, all right? And you really have to like what you do because, uh, you know, it, that is really important. And so if you're, you know, undecided about what you want to do, just ask somebody, 
hey, can I shadow you for a day? I just want to see what you do as part of your job. You know, it sounds nice. It sounds cool, but I just want to see it. Or if you want to take an extra step, you know, have an internship and actually do hands-on and, and get to help these people. Um, and then I'd say the last one, you guys, would be with for adulting. You know, start uh, saving, okay, saving money. Start learning how to get life insurance, uh, a car insurance. I mean, those, the, the adulting skills that nobody teaches you in high school or in college, uh, these are things that are so important that right now you're not thinking about that, but later on, you're going to have to. And so, you know, those are all the things that I wanted to share with you guys today. If you have any questions, uh, concerns, you know, feel free to, to message me. Um, uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have or comments. Thank, Thank you so much, Ms. Medina. We definitely appreciate uh, your presentation. Uh, I'm going to make myself the presenter now. All right, share my screen. I think you see my screen, there we go. Change the settings. All right, next, um, whoa, why did it change? There we go. Next, uh, we have a um, presentation by state universities. Um, this one's a little dear and near to me, University of Texas at Austin. Um, we have a video, so I'm going to go ahead and play it. Let me turn my camera off. Hello, my name is Adriana Garza Romance, and I'm an admissions advisor with the Office of Admission. Our motto here is what starts here changes the world. We're the number one public university in Texas. We're number 14 public university in the U.S and number 31 university in the world. We have four notable great um, ideas that are changing the world. Just to highlight a few, uh, we have the uh, lithium ion battery that was invented by one of our professors here at the University of Texas, Dr. Goodenough, under the Cockrell School of Engineering. 3D was also in print, uh, 3D printing was also invented here at the university. And we also have great other inventions and research that is being conducted here at the university, like the self-cleaning laparoscope and the mass spec cancer pin. This mass, uh, the cancer pin is actually something that will help many, many cancer patients detect where cancer is growing to make sure that we take care of it before it actually um, grows even larger. Now, there are so many great opportunities to explore here at the university. We have 480 education abroad programs, and we have 400 education abroad programs within 78 different countries. So anywhere you can think of studying, we will definitely have probably a program for you to enjoy. Now, as of right now, due to COVID, we're actually not having students um, go and study abroad, but as soon as everything um, clears up, I know our students are going to take advantage of studying abroad pretty soon. In 2019, the U.S. News World Report ranked the University of Texas as number 14 in the country for first year experience, number 16 in the country for undergrad research and creative projects. We are a tier one research institution, and our, of course, our students really are taking advantage of all the great things offered. Our university offers more than 170 fields of study across 13 colleges and schools. We have 112 Fulbright Scholars, 31 Rhodes Scholars, 23 Marshall Scholars, and we have an 18 to 1, 19 to 1 student and faculty ratio. The University of Texas has over 17 libraries where students can choose to study, um, but not only that, we actually house more than 10 million volumes in our 17 libraries, and we also have 17,000 works in the Black Museum of Art, 5.7 million specimens in the Texas Memorial Museum collection. We're also part of the NCAA Division I um, Big 12 Conference. We actually have won 53 national sports championships since 1949. And this is actually attending a, a football game or sporting events is part of our tradition. We do have 517 regular season conference titles. 130 Olympic medals won by UT Austin um, student athletes as well. 
We actually have one of the largest student-run newspapers in the nation and, and hundreds of intramural sports teams and leagues. Um, our Daily Texan is the largest newspa newspaper student-run um, in our school. We also have thir over 1,300 organizations. Um, we have seven over 70 sororities and fraternities, and we also have 14 campus residence halls. Our residence halls have two female residence halls. We also offer one male residence hall, and we also have a specific honors residence hall for students that apply into honors and are admitted into an honors program. And the rest, of course, are co-ed. And we also have three different legislative student groups as well. The University of Texas is located in our state capital in Austin. And Austin is known as the live capital music of the world. There is so much happening in the city of Austin. The city of Austin, even though it's a city, it does offer beautiful outdoor venues or um, outdoor um, activities that you can enjoy, like kayaking, hiking. There's so much to do. Even though it is a city, you can still enjoy the outdoors. We were named one of the best places to live in 2019, the best college town in 2019. And we are also have one of the big tech, where we have one of the big tech hub companies um, we have so many great uh, tech companies in the city of Austin that offer great internships, possible employment in the future. But some of them, just to name a few, we have Apple, Amazon, Indeed, Girlstar, Dell, IBM, and many, many more. To learn a little bit more about our university, please visit us at admissions.utexas.edu. And welcome, Lauren. We definitely appreciate that information. Um, like I said, Texas, a little near and dear, lived in Austin for 14 years. So thank you so much for that presentation. Next, we have a live presentation by Mr. Mario Sain. I'm gonna make him the presenter. Hi, um, should, you should be able to see this now, right? Yes, we do see that. Okay, yeah, so I am uh, I'm with uh, I'm Mario Signs. I'm an admissions advisor here in uh, the Lower Rio Grande Valley area um, with Texas A&M University Kingsville. And uh, a little bit about us, and I'll keep this definitely definitely short. I know this will be the last one you have to have here. I know it's been uh, quite a week, but uh, we are about an hour and a half drive up from the Rio Grande Valley area, depending on where you're at. In Brownsville is maybe about an hour and forty-five. Um, we're founded in 1925, so we are the uh, the oldest school in South Texas. Uh, we do a faculty ratio of 1 to 22. Our class size is average around 25 to 30, but get as low as around 10 um, once you hit like your junior, senior years. Uh, we are about a small to mid size, so we're uh, definitely a lot different than the presentation today. Uh, UC Austin's definitely, you know, probably six times our size. So we are definitely a small to mid size campus. We are on the brink of about 10,000 students now. So um, it's a little different feel. Uh, we are in a very unique area. Uh, we are in Kingsville, so if you ever have driven that way, uh, we are in a very rural area. So um, there's a lot of ranch life. Um, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's a lot different than, you know, uh, even the valley, but a lot more different than your big university towns, such as, um, you know, UT Austin or your U of H's or your, your college stations. It's definitely a, a more peaceful, um, kind of slow pace um, kind of life out there. Um, but we do, like I said, because of our location, we do offer some unique things, um, such as like with King Ranch, um, we have a Serpentarium, we offer, we do a lot of uh, vet work as well, um, and uh, quite a bit of engineering work down there too. But these are our five colleges, and we have over 80 degrees now. Um, we range from bachelor's all the way to doctoral level. Um, we are the only um, school right now that has a doctoral, also in, a, in a Hispanic studies and bilingual education. So um, there are a few, programs that we have that are very unique. We're also the first school to start up a natural gas engineering program as well. So um, definitely here our College of Engineering um, is definitely our most well known. So we, uh, we offer pretty much every engineering aspect out there from the bachelor's all the way to doctoral level, but we've won numerous awards, honestly a top five engineering school in the state of Texas. And for a school our size, um, it's definitely uh, something to, you know, we kind of brag about. But uh, we also only have the, we are the only school to have a, a four-year vet tech program as well, which is the main pathway into veterinary school. Um, you have to actually work with live animals. We have multiple ranches on campus, and we work as well, with, like I said earlier, with King Ranch. We have a lot of, uh, you know, other unique degrees. 
um, you know, just pretty much everything you can think of, we do offer it to our undergraduate students. So um, also, if there's a career path you're wanting to go to and you don't have a major in mind, you know, there's definitely that way we can work out too. Let us know the career path you would like to go into, and we'll give you a few degrees that maybe you can go out there and study that will get you to go ahead and go into that career path. So um, there's multiple ways to go into, you know, the final career path you're looking into. But um, yeah, these are our five colleges that make up our university. Um, our application requirements aren't anything crazy. We don't ask for an essay or anything like that. It's just a simple application and you're good to go. Um, so it's, it's fairly simple. Um, really just, honestly, this takes about five minutes. So um, that's really, really all you need from us. Um, I said we are a very non-traditional school. Over, uh, you know, over 80% of our students are uh, Hispanic students. Uh, we do have students from over 35 different countries, though. Um, our engineering school definitely brings in quite a lot of from um, out of the country as well. Um, over 65% uh, of our students right now are first-generation students as well. So um, uh, when I attended here, too, I was a first-generation student also. But we take pride in uh, offering numerous services and numerous um, helps to our students that are coming in now and, uh, you know, uh, don't have the help at home or don't, you know, have – any previous family members that have attended college. So we definitely aid you with mentorships, um, all different things out there that we can do for you too. And uh, being in Kingswood, such as, you know, Slow Pace City, it really gives you time to appreciate, you know, the university and the setting you're at and to really get your, uh, you know, education, you know, um, kind of as your priority out there too. Um, I'll go ahead and put that up there now. You can put, you can take a picture of that if you want more information about Kingswood. I'll be able to help you out. But I said Houston there, but, um, not in the, and not in the RGV, but uh, a little bit more. We are a Division two sports. So we do have, you know, football. We pretty much have every major sport out there. Um, we also have numerous, you know, things for students to do. So we are kind of aware Kings was a small city. So we definitely uh, put on quite a bit of events on campus. And the university itself, you know, it really is the highlight of, of Kings. We put on a lot, not just for our students, but for the community as well. Um, so there's plenty of you out there. I really highly advise you go to check out our website. You can see every degree every plan we offer and, you know, what life is like on Kingsville. There's virtual tours, virtual things you can check out as well. But um, that's really all I have. I, like I said, I keep it short. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me anytime. And thank you all for being here. Sorry, you never heard anything I was saying there. I did mention earlier that um, we definitely appreciate all our panelists. Um, and what I wanted to share with you earlier was we have a special treat for you, um, and that should be coming next. Um, as you all know, I am the executive director of RGV Lead. However, um, Pat Bubb, who you see, and there's a short video attached to her, she is retiring from RGV Lead. Today is her last official day. Um, she, she is the, the founder of Tech Prep, formerly um, Tech Prep, now RGV Lead. Uh, we just want to thank her for her leadership, and she has a closing message for our session. Hi. It is my pleasure to speak to you today. My name is Pat Bubb, and I am the outgoing executive director of RGV Lead. I have worked with RGV Lead as its leader for more than 20 years. And I've been the RGV lead representative working on the expo committee for more than 15 years. So this is the first year, though, that I've ever had the privilege of speaking at an expo that was a 100% virtual event connected over several days. I hope it's been a blessing for you who have participated. And I know that the committee has saved the videos and going to be sharing those with those of you who participated so that maybe students who missed out and didn't get to see some of these excellent presentations will have the opportunity to do that in the future. Our goal with the Expo is and always has been and continues to be to let Rio Grande Valley young people see what's available right here in the Rio Grande Valley. When most of our kids stay close to home, to live and work, to be near their families. It's important to know that there are a lot of good jobs in the valley, jobs that kids can 
prepare for and enter into that they will love. And or maybe there are some opportunities to become entrepreneurs and start new businesses that will help the family to grow, but also bless kids and their families as those young people who are in the schools now move on into adulthood. Our goal at RGV Lead, as we published the labor market report and done a lot of other things, is to let kids know, let the students currently in public schools know that there are lots of opportunities right here in the valley close to home. You will have heard about many of these good jobs at the expo sessions this week, and there will be opportunities to learn more in the future. On behalf of RGV Lead, on behalf of Workforce Solutions Cameron, on behalf of all of the Expo Leadership Committees who worked hard to bring this event to you. Thank you for being here. We hope it's been a blessing to you, that the participation has been something valuable that you can use in the future. On behalf of RGV Lead, I know it's a joy to be here with you. It's a joy to be talking with kids. It's a joy to be talking with the teachers who work with those students. And we hope that the participants have learned a lot. We want to thank all the employers and employer organizations, chambers, EDCs, and higher education partners that have shared information via videos to help kids plan for success for the future. We wish you the best, and thank you for being here. We thank you so much for uh, for being with us today, and we thank Miss Bub, Miss um, Miss Pat Bub, for her kind comments. I know there might have been a, a question that uh, you weren't able to see the screen. You're still waiting. You have to refresh your screen. Um, sorry for that. Um, refresh your screen. You'll be able to see what's coming up next. Yeah. We'd like to finally thank our expo committee, like Miss Bub said. Um, without them, this would not be possible. With all their leadership, uh, RGV lead. Um, would not have been able to pull this off. So thank you to all those that are a part of the committee. And then last but not least, for session, for the last session, session number 20, uh, we want to give you the opportunity once again, pull out your phones, point the camera to the QR code. We will send out this, uh, the survey via link, um, via email as well. We have a lot of great prizes that we want to get to you all students um, here in the near future. Uh, November the 10th is the day. Uh, so we definitely appreciate you uh, on behalf of Workforce Solutions, Cameron, on behalf of our Expo Committee, and on behalf of the staff from RGV Lead and RGV Lead Board of Directors. We thank you for being with us this week. We, we, we thank you for understanding the tech, technology difficulties that we may have had. Um, and we look forward to seeing you next year at our Expo for you juniors, um, being able to provide you with uh, new and, and updated information. So. Thank you all so much. This ends the 19th Annual Education and Career Expo. Thank you all. Have a great day. Bye-bye.